The total solar eclipse first emerged in the Mexican beach city of Mazatlan this afternoon, and the weather was just about perfect there. The eclipse is such an event there that the kids actually have the day off from school. Ash. Yeah, then moved into the U.S. across Texas, getting new video of the totality in Dallas, where Storm Team 4 meteorologist Maria La Rosa is right now. The eclipse then moved toward the northeast. Here in the city, 90 percent of the sun was covered. We have live team coverage fanned out across the tri-state. Let's start, though, with Storm Team 4's Dave Price live along the path of totality in Rochester. Dave. All right, Natalie, I'm going to ask our photographer, Katie Berry, to kind of widen the shot. This is basically Rochester's version of Times Square after midnight on New Year's Eve. Everyone's gone, and as fast as the magic happened, it's over, but while it was here, it was something to behold. All of a sudden, the brighter but gray skies closed in, and thousands of people who descended right here at Innovative Field and all across Rochester and central New York, all of a sudden grew silent. The music stopped, the chatter stopped, and for three minutes and 28 seconds, people were just amazed at what was happening in the sky. From daylight to nighttime, and then emerging to daylight again. And with that, it was almost like the movie Awakenings, where people all of a sudden jumped up, got up, and got out. It was over. But while we were here, people just had what many said were once-in-a-lifetime experiences. Take a listen. Again, exactly. tell me what was so incredible. Tell me what was so incredible about today. Something so incredible about today is that I got to see the solar eclipse for the first time. We were at the 2017 eclipse and it was completely different, but I loved seeing the clouds the way they looked. That was really cool. It was an awesome dream and it was fun to watch. Oh, it was like a dream? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Uh -huh. Now, you didn't find one single disappointed person today. Yes, we were hoping for clear skies, but I'm telling you, that show we saw here was something that you just never forget. Now, the fun is not over in Rochester. There are more than double the amount of people normally packed into New York's fourth largest city, and the celebrations continue. Uh, to really look back on what was a special day. We'll have a lot more for you, but in the meantime, it was uh, quite a remarkable experience to not only report on, but participate in this natural wonder. We'll send it back to you in the studio. Oh, Dave, I know you've been enjoying this so much. Great coverage there. And back here in the city, Manhattan essentially came to a halt as New Yorkers paused to look up at history unfolding in the sky. This is some new video we got in from Chopper 4, showing the crowds that gathered at the top of the rock to watch the eclipse. Back on the ground, News Force Andrew Siff continuing our team coverage. He's in Williamsburg. Andrew. Yeah, David, this was sort of a, a quiet, stealthy location here along the Brooklyn waterfront. Hundreds of people gathering here at Marsha Johnson State Park in Brooklyn, from school groups with kids learning science on the spot to people who live or work in the neighborhood. Most came equipped with eclipse glasses, of course, and the sight of the moon increasingly blanketing the sun brought out the poetry in people. Do you know, like, on a summer night where there's, like, a perfect crescent moon, it's like that, but the sky is completely black, and the moon is, like, the thinnest, like, fingernail crescent. It's beautiful, and it's a very gorgeous golden shade. Oh, my God. It is, it is amazing. Nothing like I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it's almost completely covered. I, for a second, I thought we were going to have totality, you know? Uh, I see orange you see glow a corona glow all around it but the line is so so tiny amazing amazing now one other feature they've had here at marcia johnson state park in brooklyn you may be able to see behind me they're looking into a telescope over there and that telescope of course is outfitted with a special lens as well giving people another glimpse now some people telling us here they were expecting to see a little bit more totality as you've heard so much about even though the forecast here was never for a hundred percent but almost everyone we spoke to pretty amazed with what they saw a unique experience a glimpse of the sky like they'd never seen it before 
We're live in Brooklyn. Andrew Siff, News 4 New York. Yeah, love that live action play-by-play from those viewers, Andrew. Thank you for bringing us that. Storm Team 4 did its best to get the forecast to yeah. cooperate and give <laughs> us a good view. Sounds like people were satisfied. I don't know if it could be any better. Meteorologist Janice Huff watching the eclipse. Just a couple floors above us right here at 30 Rock. Hi, Janice. Hi there, guys. Uh, it was, even though we did not get 100% totality, 90% was pretty good for us, and people were so excited to be up here. There were probably between 250 and 300 people here on the uh, gardens here uh, at 30 Rock, and it, everybody had their glasses on. Everybody was excited about it. We even got a free concert out of it. Wait till you see Jimmy Fallon tonight. You have got to see the show. I'm not going to spoil it for you right this second, but you're in for a special treat on that show tonight. So everyone was here. We got to see 90% of the coverage. Of course, a cloud, a cirrus cloud came over at the exact time of the, the uh, maximum for us here, but it didn't dampen any spirits because right up until that point, before that, and even afterwards, we were totally entertained by Mother Nature giving us that spectacular view today. We we loved it here and everybody had a great time and it's really one of those events whether it's in totality or even partial most people don't get a chance to see it unless you're someone who travels around the world chasing solar eclipses uh, you don't really get to see one maybe only once in your lifetime so I witnessed the partial eclipse that was here in 2017. I've actually seen a total eclipse in my life when I was younger. And it, no matter how you get to see it, no matter what the view, uh, we noticed the same things. The sky got a little dark and it got a little cooler here. It's just an amazing event in nature. It is a magical moment. Janice, thank you for that perspective. We're going to take you to another great spot in the city. We have new video from Chopper 4 showing just how packed Central Park is with people watching. News 4's Erica Byfill is there continuing our coverage. Erica, that's the place to be for just about anything that happens in New York, Central Park. <laughs> Exactly, right? So you can imagine how many people decided to filter into this park today to be a part of this moment in history. Uh, we were seeing a lot of people, of course, with their glasses in their hands. They put them on their face and they were looking up. But then we saw a woman. Take a look at this. She put a box on her head. She told me that she could not find glasses, so she found the next best thing. Uh, this was something that she came up with a couple of years ago when she saw her first eclipse. And so she decided after she couldn't find those glasses today that she was going to do it again. You're going to hear from her more and just a little bit about uh, what she saw. I did try it out myself, and it was pretty cool when you put it on. You could see the reflection inside the box. Uh, in this park, as you said, David, lots of tourists, lots of New Yorkers are here on a regular day. So today was just amplified with the energy, everyone wanting to be here because to them, this was the best spot to be here. We saw a lot of school groups here as well, since we're so close to the entrance of the park where we're standing right now on the west side. A bunch of high schoolers actually told me that their science teacher folded this experience into their lesson plan today. So then they all made the trek over here, of course, to see it in person. I asked a lot of people who were surrounding me why they were here today. Most of them, of course, said that they wanted to see it. But secondly, several people told us that this was something that was going to bring us all together and they wanted to be a part of that. Here's a little of what we heard during our time today in the park. Back in, I think it was 1955, when I was a couple years younger, I made one just like it and watched it from a place in Illinois, north of Chicago. And I couldn't get glasses anywhere. They're all going everywhere. So I remembered the box, looked it up online, and made the same box. There's not a lot of times in history where we have common experiences, and this is one of them. I mean, think about it. How many instances are there in history where you actually all humanity is watching something at the same time? Yeah, a lot of people felt that way today. I just glanced up. We have cloud cover yet again at 320 this afternoon. We had cloud covers that made totality, or at least the 90 percent that we were able to see here in New York City. Very difficult to see here in Central Park. A lot of people were a little bummed by that, but I did hear some other groups cheering. They took photos, and then they all headed out of the park, like Dave said, everywhere else. As soon as this was over, people packed up, and then they left. Reporting live in Central Park, Erica Byfield News 4, New York. To move on. All right, Erica, thank you. Let's head across the Hudson to New Jersey. Big eclipse watch party was happening there at the Liberty Science Center. That is such a cool space out there. News Force Adam Harding continuing our team coverage live from Jersey City. Hey, Adam. 
Hey, to the both of you, glad I got the invite to go to this party as folks are just now starting to file out of the Science Center behind us here. About 45 minutes ago, we all put on our glasses and we all looked up at the sky. They had about 91.2% of that total eclipse at 325 this afternoon, and we are still in it right now. Not quite at 91.2%, a little bit less by now, but we're still going for another 20 or so minutes. Folks spending the day here looking up at telescopes, trying to get a look at the sun. They had a giant monitor with a live feed of what it looked like, and it was oh so impressive. Anywhere from seven to 10,000 expected here, getting tickets to come to the Science Center today to take and among them, this truly incredible five-year-old who taught me all I need to know about the eclipse. I see um, a waning crescent. What? How do you know what a waning crescent is? Because, because a waning crescent is when, when half of the moon blocks the sun in this shape. Is he not the best? He was having the time of his life, five and a half years old, and already getting to experience what so many of us wait a lifetime to see. When I see you back here at six o'clock, because the event is still ongoing, we spoke with one woman who says she was in Africa a couple years ago, saw an eclipse herself. She'll tell us how this one compares to that one. And I got to tell you, even though we didn't get 100% totality, it was pretty close. Still an A in my book here for Jersey. It's a little chilly and a little overcast for right now, but by and large, Mother Nature finally choosing to cooperate with us. And after the last few weeks, we deserve it. It was a great time all around. Much more when I see you back here at six o'clock. For now, we're live in Jersey City outside of the Liberty Science Center. I'm Adam Harding, News 4, New York. Good stuff, Adam. You might have a future uh, astronaut there. You could definitely, as you saw in Adam's story, call this a, a teachable moment for students in our area. And News 4's Linda Baccaro caught up to some students. She's live in Mamaroneck. Hey, Linda. Hi there. And, you know, usually I haven't seen so many kids excited about science. You, see, you know, you get the science nerds, but everyone here was excited about science uh, in the Mamaroneck School District. And the opposite happened here. People, lots of kids excited. 1,300 middle schoolers, in fact, at Hummocks Middle School in grades 6 to 8, pouring out onto the school's lawn to check out the different tools to safely watch the eclipse. Science teachers working with the kids all year long to teach them about the path of the sun, the moon, and the earth and why eclipses happen and the students soaked it all in some too young to remember the past partial eclipse a few years ago this time they were well aware of how this is a truly unique event seeing the 90 percent coverage like this is just a once in a lifetime experience well i saw the one in 2017 so i just want to see it again because i don't really remember that one i really like seeing what we've been learning in class seeing it in the real world um we've learned a lot about it seeing the moon phases how it changes and everything um it's something we learned at the beginning of the year but now seeing it in real life it's it's really amazing so they were all excited. And the good thing here is that the next total eclipse actually happens in 2079, which will be well beyond my lifetime. But actually, these kids could be in their 60s or maybe 70s. So hopefully, they'll get another chance to do this all over again. That's the latest live in Mamaroneck. I'm Linda Baccaro, News 4, New York. Back to you. Definitely memorable. Linda, thank you. Now, if you did happen to look at the sun without wearing that proper protection, there's some things you need to know. Doctors say that looking at a solar eclipse, even for just a few seconds, could cause what's called solar retinopathy, meaning that the sun's bright rays burn cells in the retina at the back of your eye. And because the retina doesn't have any pain receptors, there's really no way to feel the damage as it happens. Symptoms might not appear for a few days. That includes a blurred vision, color distortion, headaches, and dark spots. And unfortunately, there's no treatment for that condition, Dave. And now that the big moment is over, you may be wondering, well, what to do with those eclipse glasses. If you don't plan to keep them as a souvenir, you can donate them for the next eclipse. The nonprofit Astronomers Without Borders will take your glasses and redistribute them in underserved communities around the world. You can donate your glasses at any Warby Parker location or mail them to Astronomers Without Borders. And if you miss the eclipse, you don't have to wait until 2044. Just go to NBCNewYork.com to see all the photos, continuing coverage of the eclipse. It's all right there. We made it easy for you right on our homepage.